Hey there, it's Emily with Cozy Clicks. And today I want to show you how to cut out a difficult subject from your photo in Photoshop and add in extra blur to your background. Now to add in extra blur, what we can do is we can go up to the layer and hit duplicate layer. I'm going to call this layer blur so that I know what we're working with and click OK. Then I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to choose the amount of blurriness that we want. Now for this particular picture, I want it to be very blurry. I want it to look very dreamy um, and creamy. So I'm going to put up my radius pretty far on this one, but you could just add in just slight blur too. It's completely up to you and then click OK. Now what happens here is we could add a layer mask and brush off our subject. But because she had so many curls, we can take a look here, because she has so many fine curls here, and because the cat fur has lots of little strands of hair poking out, that's going to be pretty difficult to brush the area off so just the blur is showing in the background. So I'm going to show you how we can cut out this difficult subject so that it looks nice against that extra blurry background that we just added. So I have my blur layer turned off and I'm going to go back to the background and I'm going to cut my subject out by grabbing my quick selection tool. Now you could use the pen tool or the magic wand, whatever you prefer. I like the quick select tool and I'm just going to left click and then drag around her. I'm going to try to get close, but if I get some edges that are out of the selection, like this cat fur down here, um, that's not going to bother me too much because we're going to fix that in just a second. Then I'm going to release that, and when I do that, I get a new button that pops up in the upper left hand side. Now I am working in Photoshop Creative Cloud 2018. So if you're not using Creative Cloud and you're using an older version of Photoshop, this button may pop up in a different area. Click Select and Mask and a new screen is going to pop up. You're going to see your selection here and you're going to see it's pretty choppy. It's not very natural, especially around those areas that are pretty hard to get in like fur and hair. Now, you're going to see a lot of different sliders and buttons over to your right hand side as well. We're just going to use a couple of these today to keep it nice and simple. The first one is this view tool up here. Now, right now it's set to onion skin. You can change it to whatever view mode you're most comfortable with and what makes this process easier for you. For me, I like black and white, so I'm going to select that one. Selecting this one makes it just much easier for me to see my edges. Now we want to refine those edges and the hair and the fur. So I'm going to go to my left hand toolbar and this second brush down is the refine edge brush tool. I'm going to make sure that's selected and then I'm going to brush that on over the edges of my subject that were more difficult. So I'm going to go, I'm going to start over on this side where I know the cat fur was and I'm just going to left click and keeping that left click down, I'm just moving it over that edge and you can see the cat fur already starting to kind of come out. When I let go of that click, Photoshop does its magic and detects all of those fine hairs and edges from the cat. And that looks like a much better, clearer selection than, for example, over on this side where I know there's cat fur in our original selection. So I'm going to do that same thing now up by her hair. So I'm just left clicking and with that refine edge brush tool, I'm just brushing over this edge of her hair just like this. And that's all I'm doing. Photoshop is doing the rest and I'm going to go into, I know the cat's right there too, so I'm going to go over that area and let's see what happens. Photoshop does its magic and detects the edges where her hair and where the fur are. Now I'm going to go back to my onion skin view so I can get a better look and I'm just going to bring in some of these areas where I do see the green uh, from the background. So I'm just, it's 
easier for me now to see the edge this way. Um, I'm going to bring in the edge a little bit over here. There we go. And like that. Now, as you get better working with this, you can practice a little bit more uh, to get even more precise. The next slider we're going to work with here is one that I like to use called the shift edge. And the shift edge slider does just that. It shifts the edge in either toward your subject or away from your subject. And this is a great slider to use if you're noticing you have haloing around your subject. If you do, you would just want to bring that edge in slightly. So I tend to ha get haloing sometimes. So I'm just going to take that shift edge and I'm going to bring it to the left. And what that's doing is it's taking the entire edge of my selection and just bringing it in a little bit. So I'm just going to bring that in like that. Okay. Now I want to choose where I want the selection to go. So down at the bottom, you'll see output to and we're going to choose a new layer. And then I'm going to hit OK. And that pops my layer up into Photoshop. So you see it right there. So I'm going to turn on my background again. I'm going to turn on that blur layer and I'm going to bring my selection up over that blur. Now you see the selection is blurred in the background, but with that, using that refine edge tool, now all of those cat hairs and all of the hairs that are on the top of her head are nicely, neatly cut out. And so my background is blurred, but those fine edges are showing through and that looks pretty cool. So that refine edge tool will really help you cut out difficult subjects. And then adding on a Gaussian blur filter will really blur up your background. Now, if you'd like to see these written directions and download a PDF of the, these directions so you can try it on your own photos, you can go to CozyClicks.com forward slash cutout and get those. To also see ways you can blur your background before you even bring it into Photoshop, you can read the article at CozyClicks.com forward slash blur to learn four ways to blur your background in camera. Now, I did some other edits to this photo and my final photo looked kind of like this. So you can see my final image with that blurred background. And this is one of the images in my editing collection videos. So if you'd like to check those out, you can at CozyClicks.com forward slash editing videos. I hope this helped you today. And if you know a photographer that this might help too, I would love it if you would share it with them and subscribe to the channel where I will be adding more video tutorials for you all the time. Thanks for watching.